Welcome back, masters of eight bars of Bolero. It's eight bars more than a lot of people can do. Of course, that's not all there is to it. I'm glad you took the time to return, because today we're going to talk about how to conduct a piece of music that's in two and a piece of music that's in four. You already remember that. Pretty simple. Two down, up, down, up, not very hard. Four, a bit more complicated. Down, left, right, up, down, left, right, up. And everything, as it was with three, is gonna be dependent on how the dynamics work, how the phrases work, how the sound of the orchestra is playing, when the music seems to stop and when it seems to go forward. But this time, we're going to have two different excerpts you to learn. Also not very long, just a few bars, but enough to give you an idea of how to practice and really learn those beats. As we did last time, we're going to show you the score first and play the music. This time, for our first excerpt, I have a feeling, just somehow, that you really might recognize this tune. Yes, it's our theme and exit music, The Hoedown from Rodeo by Aaron Copland. You've heard it enough times, so I'm sure you know the music, well, by heart now, but I'm glad you saw it, because maybe you picked up a couple of little pointers along the way, that there are really different portions with different colors and different sounds. And I can warn you, there is a trap at the end. It's really possible, and it's happened to me where just before the last bar, where there's a little bit of silence, even though the tempo stays the same, somebody can come in early. So we're gonna do this again. You're gonna watch me. We won't have the score up for you. And I'll show you more or less how I do this piece when I get to the ending. <laughs> fancy. You don't have to do it that way. I put in a little extra beat there just to show that that phrase was ending. All you really have to do is conduct in two, keep the intensity, think about where the violins are playing, think about where the trumpets are, and as you look at the score while you're conducting, see those little, I don't know what to call them, musicians call them accents. I guess we do too when we read a book. There's little accents because they give us the syncopation, bappa, bappa. They don't come on the beat, they come after the beat. See if you can get that into your conducting as you take the podium. How'd it go? I thought the orchestra played pretty well for you. Maybe you could have adjusted a few things, and since you can back up, you can try it again, over and over. You might prefer a faster tempo than I chose, even a slower one. It's all up to you, but keep that two beat going and keep the drive, energy, and sense of humor in your conducting. So now we come to the four beat, 
And not only do we come to this, we come to it with a very different mood and an extremely opposite way of conducting than we've had in our past two lessons. Take a look at this music, listen to it, follow along the score, and again, see if you can guess what piece this is. Of course, the beautiful melody that occurs in the last movement of the first symphony of Brahms. The strings are playing, violins have the melody, there's some nice rhythmic pizzicato in the lower end, and some beautiful harmonies going on in the middle section. But mostly the dynamic is somewhat reserved. It's not a forte, it's not pianissimo either. It's something in between, but it certainly starts in four. One, two, three, four, like that. So again, I'm going to show you, without the music there, how I conduct this. It could be a little hard to pick up the pickup, but I'll probably start once I hear it. Here it is. I'm going to do it again. And the reason I'm going to do it again is because there is an alternative here. And after you've learned to do it in four, you may wish to try this. I went into two. I gave it a broader sense of beat. I gave it a different sense of style. It's up to you, whatever you're more comfortable with. Whatever you feel fits the music best. Think about it. We'll put the score up again for you. And now it's your turn. Once again, I invite you to do this a couple of times, try it in different ways, see how comfortable you feel or uncomfortable. Keep your independence of hands as much as possible, be expressive in this music, and mostly enjoy yourself. Your homework is pretty simple. Go look at other scores, see the ones that are conducted in two, the ones that are conducted in four. And when we rejoin, we're going to deal with, let's see, one, five, six, seven, and eight. Oh, and there are more. But that's a lesson for another time. We'll see you soon.